Okay, so let's go through now and do a few um, problems with these gas laws. These are the types of problems you're going to see in your homework, on your exam, so on and so forth. So in this case, it says if a 4-liter container of helium gas has a pressure of 10 atmospheres, what pressure does the gas exert if the volume is increased to 6 liters? All right, so whenever you're doing these, what you, most problems are going to be like this. And what you'll notice is there's three numbers, and we're going to have to figure out the fourth. So the goal here is to first write down what you know. So you know you have 4 liters, 4.0 liter container of helium gas at 10 Point zero atmospheres, right? So that's going to be your initial conditions. And then it's saying, what pressure does the gas exert if the volume is increased to 6 liters? So in other words, we're going to take 4 liters and we're going to increase it to 6 liters. That pressure is going to become what? So what I typically recommend is, without coming up with a number, let's just try to see if we can figure out, is it going to go up or down? That way, whenever we do the math, we can make sure that we're doing the math right. Um, well, we know PV is equal to NRT. Well, in this case, we have volume, that's liters, right? And we also have a pressure, because that's what we know atmospheres are, right? So we know our two units are pressure and volume. They are on the same side of the equation up here. For pressure and volume, because they're on the same side of the equation, that means they're inversely proportional. One goes up, the other goes down. So in this case, our volume goes up. That means our pressure has to go down. So we should get a number that's less than 10 atmospheres. So here's how we're going to do it. We know that these guys over here are going to stay constant. So that means that PV is equal to PV, P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So you could call this P1V1, this you could call V, whoops, I didn't mean to zoom in there. Um, so we could call this V2, and the question mark here is going to be P2. So let's just go ahead and plug our numbers in. P1 is going to be 10.0 atmospheres. V1 is going to be 4 liters. And that's going to equal P2 times V2, which is going to be 6.0 liters. And I'm going to come down here and uh, where I have a little more room and rewrite it. So 10.0 atmosphere times 4.0 liters is equal to P2 times 6.0 liters. We can solve for P2 by dividing both sides by 6 liters. So I'm going to say 10.0 atmospheres times 4.0 liters divided by 6.0 liters. One thing I want to point out is that liters cancels out, right? This is one way to make sure you're doing these problems right with your units, is make sure your units are still canceling out. And then what you'll see is you have 10 times 4, 10 atmospheres times 4, and then divided by 6. And that's going to give you an answer that is 6.7 6 atmospheres is equal to P2. And as we predicted, that it went down. Right, so that means we did everything right there. All right, so that's an, an example of a problem using Boyle's Law with, that relates pressure and volume. All right, so here's another one. A, one liter of gas is cooled from 50 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. What is the volume of the gas after cooling? So again, let's start with PV equals NRT. And let's start with kind of what we know. Well, we have a volume here, so this is going to be V1, right? That's our initial volume. And then we have some temperatures here. So this is going to be T1, and then 25 degrees Celsius is going to be T2, right? Because it went from 50 degrees to 25 degrees. That means you started at 50, T1, and it went to the final temperature, which was T2. So if you started with one liter of gas and it says, what's the volume of gas after cooling? Well, we're going to solve for V2. All right, so let's go back to our equation here, this PV equals NRT. 
what's the relationship between volume and temperature? Well, they're on opposite sides of the equation, which means they should be directly proportional. So that means that since the temperature went down, the volume should go down. And whenever we have this, we write it as V over T equals V over T. Okay? So again, when they're, well, that should be a T too. Whenever you have things that are directly proportional, you're going to divide. So now, just like in the previous case, we can plug in our numbers. So V1 is going to be 1 liter, and I'll write it over here. 1 liter divided by T1. Now, if you recall, all of our temperatures have to be in Kelvin. So we have to convert these numbers to Kelvin. 50 Celsius plus 273 is equal to 323 Kelvin. So that's the number that I need. If you were to put this in in Celsius, you would get a wrong answer. So you have to make sure you do it correctly. 25 Celsius plus 273 is equal to 298 Kelvin. So we don't know what V2 is. We do know that this is 298 Kelvin. So now to solve this, I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm going to take V2 times 323 and say that's going to be equal to 1 liter times 298 Kelvin. So V2 times 323 Kelvin is equal to 1 liter times 298 Kelvin. V2, now I'm going to solve for V2 by dividing both sides by the 323 Kelvin, 1 liter times 298 Kelvin divided by 323 Kelvin. So again here my Kelvin cancels out and V2 is going to equal 1 times 298 divided by 323 which is going to give me an answer that is 0.9 liters. All right, and I just wrote it with one significant figure because this problem started with one significant figure with the one liter. But my calculator gave me 0.9226. But again, for one significant figure, 0.9 works, and that would be your final answer. Again, make sure you have the right units here. All right, so for this one, it says if a plastic container at 1 degree Celsius and 750 millimeters of mercury is heated in the microwave to 80 degrees Celsius, What's the pressure inside? So this is this problem here explains why whenever you put like a Tupperware in the microwave, you always take the lid off or you at least crack the lid. Um, because what we're going to see here, right, if we remember that uh, PV is equal to NRT, we can see that we're increasing the temperature, right? Temperature, we're increasing the temperature, which means that pressure should go up because they're on opposite sides of the equation. Um, so PV equals NRT, we can write the relationship between pressure and temperature as P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2, right? Because again, they're on opposite sides of the equal sign here. Um, so we know that our values, so 1 degree Celsius is going to be a temperature. We're all going to go ahead and convert that to Kelvin because we know that's necessary. Um, remember, it's 273 plus the degree Celsius, so that's going to give us the 274 Kelvin. Um, the 750 millimeters of mercury is going to be a pressure, so that's going to be our initial pressure. So this is going to be T1 is equal to 274 Kelvin. P1 is going to be 750 millimeters of mercury. Um, the final pressure, P2, is what we're going to solve for. And then this 80 degrees Celsius, we would add 273 to to get to 353 Kelvin. And that would be our final temperature. So once you have that, it's just a matter of plugging it in and solving for P2. So we know that P1 is going to be 750 millimeters of mercury. T1 is going to be 274 Kelvin equals P2, which we don't know, divided by 353 Kelvin. 
do our cross multiplying. This times this is going to equal that times that. We get P2 times 274 Kelvin is equal to 353 Kelvin times 750 millimeters of mercury. P2 is going to equal 353 Kelvin times your 750 millimeters of mercury divided by 274 Kelvin. Our Kelvins cancel out, right? Make our units cancel out. And then our final answer here is going to be 353 times 750 divided by 274, which gives us 966 um, point two four zero eight whatever so 966 millimeters of mercury um, and I should probably go ahead and round that up to have two significant figures like I have for every other number up here so let's go ahead and write that as 970 millimeters of mercury and that would be our final answer for that one so again, all of these problems, you're going to be doing the same thing. You identify your variables, figure out what they are. Based on the ideal gas law equation, you kind of figure out which of your specific gas laws to use, and you plug your numbers in. Now, this last one is a little bit different. So this last one says, how many moles of gas are in a human breath that occupies 450 milliliters at one atmosphere and 37 degrees Celsius? So the one thing you'll notice about this one is it doesn't say that anything's being changed. There's no temperature going up. There's no pressure going down. It's just asking, how many moles are there? So for this one, we know that PV equals nRT. And it is just using this equation to solve for the number of moles. So we're going to use this to solve for n. Okay. We always know what R is, right? R is a constant that's a given. Temperature, check, we have it. Volume, check, we have a volume. Pressure, check, we have it. So now it's just a matter of plugging in all of these numbers uh, to solve for N. So what I'm going to do is rearrange the equation. I'm going to say N is equal to PV divided by RT. So basically, I divided both sides of that this equation here by RT. And so now I have PV divided by RT is equal to N. That's going to allow me to solve for N. Now, what I want to do is uh, point out that we have our pressure in atmospheres. So one thing that we have to do, if you recall, I said whenever you're doing problems like this, you have to know which of the R's to use, right? There was two different R's. So in this case, the R that we're going to use has to be the R that has a value in atmospheres. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of my unknown. So the pressure is going to be one atmosphere. The volume is 450 milliliters divided by, if we were to go back, I'll click back through my slides here might take me a minute to get there. And here is R. So notice that R, we want the one that's in liters atmospheres mole Kelvin, not the one that's in liters tor. So this is how you would know which one. You're looking to match your units atmosphere. So 0 0.0821. Almost there. 0 0.0821 liters times atmosphere divided by moles times Kelvin. And then the temperature is 37 degrees, but as can be pointed out here, or you should just remember in any time with gases, we have to convert to Kelvin. We have to convert this to Kelvin by adding plus 273. So that's going to equal 310 Kelvin. So 310 Kelvin. Okay, so there's one other thing we have to do here. And if you notice, our 
value of R says liters, atmosphere, mole, Kelvin. So I'm going to go ahead and start canceling out units. Atmosphere cancels with atmosphere. Kelvin cancels with Kelvin. We're solving for moles. Now, the one thing that doesn't cancel out is I have a liter here and I have a milliliter here. So one thing that we're going to have to do before we can finish this problem is convert this milliliter number to liters. So let me just come down here on the bottom of the slide. 450 milliliters times, you have 1,000 milliliters per one liter, and that's going to equal 0 0.450 liters. So I'm going to go ahead and change this number that I had here, and I'm going to erase 450 milliliters, and I'm going to replace it with 0 0.450 liters, okay? So now I can go through and actually cancel out my liters, and I'm left with moles. Um, it's a little bit tricky whenever you have something that's on the denominator of a denominator. It actually flips back up, so our final answer will be in moles. Um, and now we can go ahead and do the math. So in this case, it's going to be 1 times 0.45, because we converted to liters, divided by 0 0.0821, and then divided by 310. And our answer here is going to be, I'll do it in red to be consistent, uh, 0 0.02. And again, I'm writing this in, with one significant figure, because this was just at one atmosphere, but I got... 0 0.01768 um, on my calculator. So the answer though is 0 0.02 moles. Um, so on my calculator, I did it exactly as I read it to you. I did 1 times 0.45 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 310. The other way you could do this is um, 1 times 0.45 and then divided by, then in parentheses, 0 0.0821 times 310 end parentheses, and you should get to the exact same number. But make sure you're comfortable with that math and get to the correct answer here, which should be 0 0.02 moles. So this problem here asks what volume will be occupied by 0.1 moles of H2 gas at STP, and it also says what volume will be occupied by 0.1 moles of CO2 gas at STP. And one thing I want you to draw your attention to is this whole at STP part for both of these. Right? Anytime you hear that term, you should be thinking, okay, this is standard temperature and pressure. This has to do with that standard molar volume that we talked about. Right? So that standard molar volume, if you recall, is 22.4 liters per mole. Okay? So that's going to be our conversion factor that we're going to use, and it doesn't matter what gas. So Whatever we calculate for the top one here, it's going to be the same answer for the volume one because 0.1 moles of any gas at STP is going to occupy the same volume. So for this one, we're going to do 0.1 moles of gas. We're going to use the conversion factor to convert 22.4 liters per mole. Our moles are going to cancel out. Moles cancels with moles. And our answer here would be 2.4 to four liters. Now, we need to write that with only one significant figure though, so we'll say two liters of H2 gas and two liters of CO2 gas. All right, so both of those are the answers for that one.